Hi, this is Cassandra from Homeschool Peace. I wanted to take a minute today to share with you my favorite homeschool planner. This is the Mardell A Simple Plan for the Homeschool Family Planner. The one that I currently have in my hands is the 20, 2020 and 2021 school year. So this is for the upcoming school year. I just received this planner um, a few uh, weeks ago. So I wanted to share with you this planner. We also use this planner currently. This planner I have ordered now three times. So I've used it for two years and this will be then coming into my third year using it. So this is the one that I'm currently using for this current school year. So I wanted to walk you through it. I have had some people ask me, how do I keep my day organized? And this is truly the way that I'm able to organize all my kids into one. I have three kids that I homeschool. And when you have three kids with different types of curriculum, some of my curriculums do have an actual schedule. Um, other parts of the curriculum that I get do not have a written, like this is what you need to do every single day. So I'll take you through this. First thing that you'll see in this schedule is that it has, I'll just start here, has tabs that run around the side, like a pretty standard. Next thing about the schedule is it has a great planning section. This planning section is something that I use and reference regularly. The main page that I love to use as part of this planner, this page called the yearly overview. So for each of your kids, you can write their name at the top and the specific subject that you're wishing for them to get done with, and so this one would be math. And so what you do is you basically, I always start at the end. What do I need to finish to get done with the school year? So for we use math you see for our curriculum, there is 30 lessons. So I would start at 30 and I would backtrack through the school year to figure out how fast, if I started on one and I ended on 30, how much do I need to do every single week to get done? That's really helpful for me. Additionally, in the planning, they do have over here a schedule. Now, I like to call it a plan because my days change all the time. Even though I might plan it out, there's always an interruption. So this more gives you a rough guide on what are you doing, how are you doing it in your days, and what sort of happens throughout the week. The next thing in the planning that it has, it has this for every single month. You are able to look through what they need to accomplish, special activities, Maybe it's the reading list. I use this as what I need to get out from the library for the month, as well as supplies needed. So for say science, maybe there's a few supplies I need to pick up. So I use that. Um, additionally, they have for each month a big calendar that looks like this. So you're able to write on different things of going on for the week or maybe some museum or a trip you're going on. And then this is how it looks for on the daily, weekly basis. So if you can see here in this example, um, they use initials for each of these. So on this side, you see Bible, math, science, history, English. Okay, so this is what this example, this is the example they give you on what maybe you would have. So you would put whatever you have going on for your subjects. Then each of your kids, you just basically use their initials. So in this example, they have an AG and a JK. So AG is going to accomplish this today, and JK is going to accomplish this today, all in math. And I get that information of what you need to accomplish per each week by going back to referencing my yearly overview. So for this example, it was math. So I would have went and looked at for math for this particular week. Let's say for week six. So I would look at six, see what I need to accomplish for that week. And then I would plug in that for the week for each of my kids. So I love that so much, so easy to plan. So if I go to my planning section, now I started this for my family coming up um, for this coming school year. So for this, you can see, um, this is my math. Let me just bring it up. And I don't have it fully planned out yet because I know I wanna get to 30. This is for math, you see. I know we're gonna start on one. And then I made some major goals like the unit test that I have of sort of what that pacing would be. And then basically I got mm, the first quarter planned out and then I left blanks. And then I sort of, where do I want to be by the time I hit my third quarter? It's just how I do it. And so then maybe if I'm approaching, you know, the end of the sec first quarter and I realize we're not moving fast enough, maybe I'll then sort of speed this part up a little bit, or maybe we are going really fast. So then maybe I can spread this out just to give us a little bit of a breather and some more time to do some other activities. So that would be how I would plan this out. So then let's just show you 
an actual week. So let's say we go into August. Here's that section that I was first showing that you can put your overview. Um, I like to use my planner specifically for school. I don't really fill out, to be honest, I don't fill out anything with my prayer requests. I don't, I like to put that stuff in my own journal. Um, I sometimes maybe something I want to accomplish or again, uh, the library list. I use that for that. And here would be your first day. So let's say you started school on August 3rd. You would get the information on what you're going to do for each of your subjects by going back to that planning section. Um, I would write out, for me, we use sunlight as our curriculum, so I always do sunlight first. And then I would put in, a lot of people say, well, if you use sunlight, why do you need to do this? Well, sometimes I stretch out my sunlight over multiple days, or um, it's just one place that I'm seeing all the information, as well as what I need to do for math. You see, we use logic of English for reading lessons, and then we also uh, use the good and the beautiful for science. So I'm able to space that out for the week. If you school on Saturday or Sunday, some days I would just draw a line here, write Saturday up there, and we would track that on Saturday. So sort of like an extra day for their notes or for that other day. And then coming through to the end, you just have a little future planning section. So maybe there's something that you wanna think about for the next month, I'll write some notes down there. So when you look at the planner, when you first get it, it might seem a little bit beefy, maybe a little overwhelming at first, but if you look at it, it's really not because from July through June, that much of the planner is just what I showed you, what's going on every single week. It's just for, we are weekly tracking. Next section is a student record. Uh, we use this in our state, we have to track 180 days of school. So we use this, I simply take a line, cross that off on the days that we did school, track it at the bottom, we hit 180 days, this goes in our portfolio for tracking our school days that we need to present in our portfolio. Um, has a few other information into the curriculum list. So, you know, maybe where you can, what curriculum do you still need to buy? So I started doing this for next year. What do I still need to buy for next year? And then has some other information in the back, such as like a grading chart. To be honest, I don't really use that section. I, my favorite section, again, going back, is my planning. So I showed the one with the example. Here would be the one that's blank. So again, if I was going to do science, it might be science or child's name science. And then for something like the good and the beautiful, if you know are familiar with that, they use different unit studies. So maybe I can space out how many units, I wanna do three unit studies for the year. I space out when do I want them done so that I can finish three by the end of the year. And then I use this going back to every single week, only planning maybe a week ahead. And I plan it out, putting it here. So if you like this planner, I would recommend going over to Mardell's website and seeing if you can order it. If you are um, on their site and say it's not available, um, don't worry about it. Just for maybe the next year, what you can do is um, in the beginning of January, so bring out your calendar even now, put it beginning of January, make yourself a note to say, order this planner um, because you wanna get it before it sells out. They do print a limited number of these planners. So I hope you enjoyed this review. If you like this review and you wanna hear more of my reviews, please like and subscribe my page. Thank you so much.